Today, I am talking to a voiceover artist who is the voice for the 2021 Emmy Award winning documentary, Shaw Rising, about the oldest HBCU in the South. He's done nationally aired commercials for Ford during the Kentucky Derby and Kumo Tires, featuring NBA all-star John Wall of the Houston Rockets. He's the brand voice behind Community Bank, aired regionally in the South, and he's the brand voice for a new apparel company called Shucks. I'm talking to Greg Campbell. I'm Aiden Nepal, and this is The Changed Podcast. Welcome to the Changed Podcast. Thank you for uh, having me uh, as a guest. I really appreciate it and been looking forward to it. So I'm very excited. Very excited. Wonderful. Um, well, I can hear in the timbre of your voice why you are a professional voice actor. You ha- your voice is like butter, my friend. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I've had this voice since the uh, eighth grade, believe it or not. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes. No, that, that's so. hard to imagine walking through the halls in eighth grade and somebody being like, you know, <laughs> I like penny loafers. And you'd be like, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't very kind when I was uh, going through that time period and, and this uh, walking into uh, homeroom for the, um, uh, after a summer vacation and and my friends was wondering, you know, what happened to Greg? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you know, so. eighth eighth grade is kind to so few. <laughs> uh, exactly. Exactly. It's a rough it's a rough <laughs> time in every kid's life, I think. Uh-huh. Um well, yeah, it's like butter. And uh whenever you came into this voice, uh lucky you, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Um I heard a rumor, mostly from you, right before I hit the record button, that today, uh, when we're recording this conversation, it's your birthday. That's correct. That's correct. I'm uh, 26 today. I'm I'm (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to stick with that. (laughs) You sound like my grandmother. She turned 29 (laughs) every year until the year that was the last year. And so she died at 29 years old. (laughs) Tragic to go out that young. Do you have any like birthday traditions? Not really. I mean, I, I, um, I, my, my wife is different. I mean, she had her birthday on August 1st and she's still celebrating it because she has like girlfriends take her out to dinner. She's had four dinners so far. (laughs) So (laughs) my dinner and then three other friends. Um, but for myself, not really. I mean, I just, just like to, uh, I like to do something for myself just for that day. And normally it's just, you know, either just relaxing or, um, you know, having dinner myself. So, yeah. Yeah, that's funny. My husband has a summer birthday as well. And he's like super uninterested in making a big thing about his birthday. And I'm a person who likes to celebrate big and for a long Mm -hmm. time, much like your wife. So I'm always like, what do you want to do for your birthday this year? And he's like, (laughs) I don't. And I'm like, that's not an acceptable answer. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) We've we've settled on backyard barbecues as a good way to celebrate Uh, the summer birthday for for whoever's in town. I love to do that too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then he spends the majority of it just cooking he likes to stand by the grill. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's I like to do that as well. So that was on my mind today for this evening. So, but I think my wife has some plans. So I I won't be firing up the grill today. Um. Well, Greg, I am curious. Um. You know this this podcast is all about you know inspecting and understanding and diving deep into the idea of change. And I I'm curious. When you hear the word change, when you think about change in your own life, um, what comes to mind? Like, what's your relationship with change? Um, I think my my relationship with change has always been, um, I've always done different things and I've always tried to change. Um, Looking career-wise, I'm reinventing myself actually by doing voiceovers. Um, Because I started out in broadcasting, you know, doing news and sports, uh, did some radio, 
um, and I did a morning show for radio. And, um, and then I got away from um, TV and radio. I thought, I didn't think I'd ever do it again. And someone said to me, you know, you have a nice voice. Uh, have you ever thought about doing audiobooks? And I was just like, mm, I've never read an audiobook or anything like that. So um, I thought it would be great to try something different. And I tried this. I've been doing it for about five years and I love it. So for me, I'm always been welcome to doing things differently and doing, you know, mm -hmm. change means to me, it's always something better down the road, something something good on this on the way, you know. So for me, that's just, it's always been like that. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That uh, there's always something good coming down the road is a really lovely way to think about it. Whether mm -hmm. it's you going for something or on the other side of something that may be less exciting or desirable, mm -hmm. there's something good coming down the road. What a nice mantra. And mm -hmm. um, I'm curious if you have a favorite book that you've voiced. Um, actually, I'm working on one right now, and it's it's a very good book. And it's written by a childhood friend who um, oh. went on to be a, a writer for our hometown paper. And um, it's called Motown Man. And oh. um, it's, I originally grew up in Flint, Michigan, which is mm -hmm. um, about 65 miles away from Detroit. And many areas in mid-Michigan had the auto industry and Flint had mm -hmm. Uh, Buick City. So that's where all the Buicks were pretty much made. And um, many of my family worked there. And uh, the writer uh, worked there. And his name is Bob Campbell. There's no relations. Uh, he's a year <laughs> older than me, but uh, we kind of grew up in the same neighborhood. And he went on to write. Uh, he wrote for a magazine as well. And so he approached me about two months ago, a month and a half ago, and wanted me to do his book. So, and I'm liking it. I'm almost done with it. And uh, he's a very good writer. Um, and I- Motown Man. Yeah, it's, it's Motown Man is about, um, it's actually um, an interracial relationship. Um, there's the main character's name is Bradley. And Bradley is an engineer and um, his uh, soon to be wife, his name is Abby. And she is a journalist. So I think he's kind of mixed a little bit of our hometown in the book and his profession in the book and um, woven into that relationship. And uh, it's kind of cool because um, she's, the book deals with the year 1991 and she is away in Miami on a uh, diversity seminar. And he's <laughs> back <laughs> at home in Flint um, and, uh, that's how the relationship kind of, uh, works. I mean, it's, they're talking about, um, what it's like to be a black man and what mm -hmm. she's learning about, uh, his struggle. And mm -hmm. she's learning about other struggles as well from other, um, ethnic groups. So mm -hmm. it's right now, I mean, it's, I really it's like pertinent. Yes. Sounds yes. like it's really pertinent. It's uh, yeah, it's so interesting. And then in the 90s, right around 1991, uh, 92, um, I also was I, I was part of a of a project called Camp Odyssey here in Oregon, which was for teenagers and mm -hmm. um, and the focus was on um, building bridges between communities in our state. Um, mm -hmm. Oregon has a, a a racist, very racist history. Um like when it came to the Japanese internment camps, Oregon was like, oh, yeah. what's the deadline? April? We can beat that. We'll round yeah. everybody up in February. I mean, oh, it was wow. like our our state has a really troubled past. And in the 90s, there was a really big effort to to work with young people to try and, um, you know, to build those bridges so that we could move forward as a state mm -hmm. and and i think it's interesting now uh, the, all week long i've been leading um diversity equity and, and inclusion trainings for companies and uh actually for the last 3 weeks and it's just interesting to me to this, that it's all coming back around it's like mm -hmm. this idea that we did it in the 90s and then we were done we were like look look how <laughs> look how tolerant we are tolerant was the word right, of, right, of the hour right. 
And now it's come back around. We're like, no, tolerant is the wrong effort here. Yeah. Community is the right effort. Belonging. Mm -hmm. We want belonging. What, um, in reading this book set in the 90s and reflecting on modern day, it's mm -hmm. clear that there's a connection there. But what what are your thoughts about the, the changes or the need for change? Um, from well, I think there's um, been some changes. You know, unfortunately, when there is change, there seem to be backlash um, mm -hmm. too often. Um, that's a part of the process, but I think it's it's uh, since 1991. Yeah, there's there's been, you know, I I didn't think we'll have our first black president in my time in my lifetime, and that's happened. Um, yeah. You know, so uh, from 1991, if someone was to tell me that. Um, you know, a decade from now, we are going to have our first African American president or president of color. I, I would have been like, "Yes, you are right." You know, I didn't. Some, that was something I really didn't think I would see in my lifetime. Maybe my children's. So I think that was a, a very significant step. I mean, um, so from that time period, I, I think there's been some good positive growth. I mean, I, I had um, my daughter was uh, born in the 2000s, and um, to be able for her to be able to see that, uh, I think it's just amazing because I, I do kind of look back over my family and knowing my grandmother, um, I don't want to give totally give my age away, but my grandmother was um, a big, um, I mean, she was in my life and until she was, uh, until I was 16 and she passed away. And think about the progress that was made from mm -hmm. the time that she was my daughter's age to now that's something I share with my daughter. And so it's, 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 it's been great. It's been great. And from that time frame to now, but there's still, you know, we still got a ways to go. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. The, the pace at which life shifts and change changes oh, is always so striking to me. Yes. Um, absolutely. Whether it's, um, the way we view certain policies and in, in politics or whether it's technology advances mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it's just the pace at which these things change seems so quick and it's fascinating to me uh i come from a background of studying history oh, and yes. but like ancient history not ancient oh, history okay. but old europe mm -hmm. and and you know hundreds of years were things kind of stayed the same. Yeah. Um, and then you'd have some big event that would change everything. Mm -hmm. And then, and then now it's like every for you, every year, change, yes. change, change. Yes. It's like we're ratcheting yes. up our, our change muscles. Right. It's important. It's very important. Um, you know, that's how you grow. I mean, I think that, uh, uh, it, I think that uh, one of the biggest things with, with change is fear. I think people, um, you know, live too much in fear a little bit. I think um, there's, a, I mean, there's a lot of things that, that, that are scary out there that can scare you, but yeah. I've always challenged myself and just try to just keep going, keep moving and just allow change to come. You got to embrace it. It comes, some things you can you know, you can't control. It's part of yeah. not being able to control it. But, you know, you look at your experiences and you see, well, I'm better for it. I'm, you know, I'm glad I try to have an open mind and live my life that way. Absolutely. Yeah. I always think of the book Dune, you know, fear is the mind killer. Mm -hmm. um, what do you tell your daughter about these things? As um, I, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I tell her that um, uh, I, I try to, one, um, educate her on history because that's what my grandmother did for me. I mean, she talked to me a lot about her experience. You know, she mm -hmm. grew up in Alabama, um, and then um, she moved to Michigan. You know, during the Great Migration, a lot of African Americans moved to, to Michigan, um, and earlier part of the last century. And um, so I, you know, I, I talked to her about that because she, she was kind of my history teacher, so to speak. Uh, that's what I've learned a lot about what you may see in the news nowadays. 
Um, you know, they talk about what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and all that on the news. My grandmother told me about that stuff. I mean, I already knew. And um, so that's what I, you know, try to explain to her that, um, you know, there's, uh, don't feel discouraged. Uh, there's going to be challenges. Um, but, you know, you're, you're going to, now in your age, I mean, you're, I think you can really prosper you know, a lot more better than what I did and, and mm -hmm. the people that came before you. So, and I think she understands that and appreciates that. And, you know, you just have to explain that to her that there's going to be some struggles, but just keep, keep, keep your head up and keep moving forward. Um, I'm a big believer in storytelling as a, as a method for teaching, as a method for exploring ideas. It's mm -hmm. the root for this show. And I, um, I love this um, image that came to mind of you sitting with your grandmother and listening to her telling a story mm -hmm. as a way of teaching you important history. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, one of my biggest regrets in life is that I didn't record all of my grandmother's stories. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, absolutely. It was before I owned recording stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but I now do get the privilege, and I guess this is probably a great time to trans uh, to transfer into this section of the show. But I get to hear stories as a way mm -hmm. of exploring this concept of change, and I would love, Greg, if you are ready to share a story from your life of a moment when things changed for you in some way. In the mid '90s, I um, I worked in television. Um, there was a, uh, at the time I was working as a uh, news photographer, which is a cameraman, and I wanted to move into sports. And um, the station I worked with, I worked for back in Michigan, uh, one of the reporters there, I was shooting with him and they were, um, and television, you don't hear about it as much as, as today as you did back then, but there was something called sweeps. You know, that was when all the programs ran their, their new programs coming out and uh, series pieces, you know, for local news and all that. And uh, we had a series piece. Uh, again, uh, and the interracial thing comes kind of comes into play here is that my um, colleague uh, was doing a uh, report on um, apartment discrimination. And so his girlfriend actually worked for um, NBC affiliate in Tampa, Florida, and she was flying up um, to see him. And we were going to work together as uh, pretending to be a couple for apartment uh, discrimination piece. And, um, and we did, we worked on it. Uh, the second place we went to, we got discriminated against, unfortunately. And that that place also the testers in Michigan also um, uh, found the same thing, same issue huh. with that apartment complex. And we didn't know that until after it was done. But uh, my friend, uh, that um, his girlfriend, she was taking that position. There was a brand new station that was going to be opening up in Tampa. And, um, and she remembered me working on the piece with her. And, um, and I, at, by that time I was working in sports at my station in Michigan. And, um, she contacted me about, um, an anchor position there. I didn't get the job the first time, but, um, after that, uh, there was another position opening up as a reporter and producer. And, um, they flew me down for the interview and I got the job and everything. So that was a changer for me is that meeting this individual actually led to a domino effect of me. One, my goal was I wanted to move out of Michigan. I wanted to move someplace warm. So I moved to Tampa, Florida. That's where the job was. I was ready to meet my future wife. I met her here. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and then I wanted to work in, in a top 20 market. So all three of those goals were met just from that person meeting her. And so I, um, her name is Carla. And I, um, you know, she actually, you know, came to our wedding and I, invited her to a wedding and everything. But that really was a time in my life where meeting her and meeting, uh, doing that piece led to 
just boom, boom, boom. So many more things in my life, positive things in my life, my goals that I wanted to reach, all three were nailed just from that encounter with her. So that was just, for me, that was awesome. And I never, never um, uh, forget that. So yeah, I mean, it was just, I was like, Carla, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have met my <laughs> wife. And I, you know, so that was just awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that story. And thank you, Carla, for all of your contribution to uh, to this. It's <laughs> exactly. amazing, isn't it? How exactly. the difference, how me meeting one person can shift the trajectory of your whole mm -hmm. life. Um, that's exactly. a fun thing to think about. It's fun to think back to, um, you know, people prioritize networking. It's not a secret that who you know in this mm -hmm. world makes a difference. But what's less clear is how to tell if who you know is going to change the trajectory right. trajectory of your life. And right. I, I don't think you can, right? Like you didn't in that moment, you weren't yeah. like, thank God yeah. I met you today. <laughs> My life's yeah, about yeah, to yeah. change, but, right? Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, I think um, you're, you have, kind of a, a vibe from someone just like you know when you have a, a a negative energy from someone yeah it was just a positive energy i had from her you know there was uh, things that she was changing in her life she was just going into news and a lot of good things were happening for her and so mm -hmm. when you hear things like that you know that you've met a good person and this is a person that uh, doing the right things and you want you want to be a part of their success so i think that mm -hmm. that's that's something that you notice as well, um, that it could lead to some good things for you. And that that's what happened. So absolutely. I like that. I recently had a conversation with uh, Kendrick Shope. She's, um, uh, she's a woman who teaches people how to sell as entrepreneurs, how to sell their services. And um, we talked a little bit about that, that sense of, I call mm -hmm. them, I call them hits. She calls them breadcrumbs, but that feeling uh, <laughs> when you walk into yeah. a building or you meet a person, um, like you're describing that you get a sense, you get a, like a, an mm -hmm. impression or a vibe. Do you mm -hmm. have a, a, a loving nickname for that sensation? <laughs> like we do? <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, I, I just, um, I could call it my spidey sense, but no. Um, oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Do that. Call it your spidey sense. Yeah, it's great. Spider-Man fan. But, um, but you know, you, you do. You, I think there is uh, trusting your instincts. I mean, it's, I always believe that, that um, they've never been wrong. And I think you know, sometimes, um, like you said, you get that vibe when you met somebody that, mm -hmm. that, that something that is a, um, there's a darkness about them or there's something that just, you know, just very positive and um, you feel they make you smile or they, you feel really good or connect to them and talk to them. And so, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, you know, when it happens. Yes, absolutely. Wait, wait, you just said they've never been wrong. Have you never had an experience where you were like, that person is a certain kind of way and I can tell, and then you found out, no, the opposite was true. Um, I can't think of any where I've, I've really? been, been pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty darn accurate with it. You know, I mean, I, I, yeah, I can't, I can't think of two, maybe when I was younger, but I think as an adult, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, yeah. younger, you're, 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 um, you just don't know, but when you get older, um, absolutely. I feel like I trust them and, uh, they haven't been wrong. So maybe since I was a young adult, I would say um, my senses have been very good when it comes to uh, meeting people and um, hasn't, hasn't disappointed me too much. So, yeah. And I, I got to say that is impressive. I, I generally speaking, trust my, my spidey sense pretty well, but I have had one experience where for like two years, I really avoided a certain person because I, um, when I met them, I had a bunch of like vi visuals pop into my head of what I thought their story was of their life. Oh, really? I was like, I don't want anything to do with that. Yeah. yeah. But that was all made up. Yeah. <laughs> None of it yeah. was true. Yeah. And eventually, because we were 
we're both performers and we would do shows together and it's hard to avoid each other mm -hmm. uh, in the rehearsal process. Um, eventually we did have some conversations with each other mm -hmm. and I discovered how mm -hmm. wrong I was. And this is one of my favorite people now. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> so I have, I have had that experience of being so completely wrong. I mean, it, his, a lot of what it was, was his, uh, I thought his upbringing was like violent. Like I had this, like he's dangerous kind of a vibe because mm -hmm. of his, uh, his manner of speech. And it turns out he had grown up with a really similar upbringing to me with a like, meditation filled hippie loving kind oh, of really? uh, modern wow. new agey upbringing yeah he couldn't have been more different than what i thought wow. he was really a total pacifist i mean it was fascinating he just had really good diction um wow. and he he hit his d's and his t's so hard i thought he was a violent person oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so i <laughs> <laughs> So I guess that's a addiction warning, like uh -huh. really good to speak clearly, but also you want to have a softness to you. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I kind of um, go by Maya Angelou a little bit, you know, person, the person uh, tells you who they are the first time, believe them. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of live by that a little bit. I mean, because down the road, you, if you, that first impression means a lot. And so, yeah. you know, you, you see, um, and I think, I think that works both ways. It's kind of projected in a positive in a, in a negative way, mm -hmm. but I think it's in a positive way as well. Um, you know, when I get a uh, vibe from someone that, uh, that, uh, that's been good. Cause, um, you know, I, I have a couple of friends in my life that I've known since, I mean, forever. And, um, uh, uh, my wife met a good friend of our family. He's like another brother for me. And I remember when I, the first day I met him, there's two people like that in my life that they're older than they're my uh -huh. brother's age. And uh, I remember I met them the same summer and uh, when I was 12 and they've been in, in my life since then. And um, how did you meet them? I met one at um, a softball game. My sister played softball um uh -huh. fast pitch softball and um and I, he was in the uh stands with uh two other friends and one of the one of the people um my sister was dating uh, uh one of the guys and um uh, so i met him there his name is leonard and i've known him forever and he's much older than me but he's you know just we just really hit it off and then another guy a couple of months later well, my um, my brothers were going to uh, their high school football game, and I met him uh, for the, the first time. And he's been like a big brother to me as well. He's always encouraging me when it comes to my voiceovers. He was he's probably my biggest fan. And he's um, before <laughs> I started before I even did my first voiceover, he was like, "Greg, um, so when are you going to do a voiceover?" You know, he was always very encouraging. So, and they've been in my life since I was 12. So they've been in my life a long time and they've just been, um, <laughs> again, like extra brothers. I just call them my extra brothers. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So, yeah. Do you remember those first conversations? What was so oh, magnetic yeah, about yeah. those? Well, um, you know, uh, I mean, it was mostly funny stuff because yeah. um, uh, just I guess, characteristics and uh, one of the other guys, his name is Bo, and um, his name is Dwayne, but we call him Bo. And um, he's just, he was just such a character that day on the way to the game. Um, <laughs> one of the things that, that really stood out, and I'm going to give away my age here, but I don't care. I'm going to just do it. Um, back <laughs> then, there was the um, Bionic Dog. Remember that show? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he was talking about how the dog was so powerful and the dog pushed this paw through the window, you know, in a car. <laughs> and just him talking about that, just, I mean, he had me cracking up. I mean, we were going on the way to the game and he was talking about that. So I never forgot that. And then um, um, the other buddy, Leonard, I mean, they were just, um, you know, talking about the game and stuff. And one of one of the uh, buddies that was there, he was giving my older, my older brother a hard time uh, in the stands. And so that's what I just remember Leonard from. Leonard wasn't doing it, but 
um, that's those are the things that stand out when I first met both of those guys. But uh, yeah, the the bionic dog thing. We were driving in the car, and um, he 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 was talking about that story about that you know the previews of it. It hasn't hadn't debuted yet, but that's what he was talking about, and he just had me cracking up, and you know, so, yeah, it's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Those shows were so fun. Uh huh. Well, how would your life be different if you hadn't met those guys? Um, well, I think that, um, you know, it just, it's just good to have people, good people. I mean, it's, it's rare when you meet good people and, and you just want them to be a part of your life. Um, mm -hmm. And they were always positive, always treating me in a way like, um, like a little brother, but um, and taking care of me in that way, in that regard as well. So um, I think that um, they sometimes when a person is older than you, you can kind of see how you want to be treated. They treat you yeah. the way you want to be treated. And then you see how they, they treat other people. And, you know, when you meet someone, um, when you get older and you meet someone, uh, that's, you recall how, how they treated you and as a younger person. Uh, for example, I, I remember um, when I worked at the TV station, there was um, uh, someone who was an intern, a young lady who was an intern. And um, I always treated her like she was one of the adults. You know, I didn't talk mm -hmm. down to her, you know, mm -hmm. like some people would talk to her like, um, um, you know, she's just a high school uh, kid or something like that. And I right, always right. talked to her you know, on the same, um, you know, level. And uh, she appreciated that. And we've been great friends. And um, through the years, she got a job in Atlanta. And uh, so just from that experience of um, how older guys treated me, that's, I kind of returned that on to her. And, you know, she's married and has uh, her, and her, you know, they're like family to me now. I mean, that her and her, mm -hmm. um, uh, kids and everything. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, just uh, good people um, making a great in impression in your life. I love that. I would say that's been the theme of our whole conversation are the mm -hmm. good people who, who leave a mark on your life, you know, Absolutely. from your grandmother teaching you history to Carla, giving you these opportunities to these good friends, um, showing you how to support someone's journey to you supporting mm -hmm. someone else's journey. It, uh, what a beautiful theme. Absolutely. Um, absolutely a beautiful theme. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, it's interesting. You know, one of the things that we'll often do um, when we're, when we're leading these um, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, experiences is we'll start with a story circle around the word belonging. <clears throat> we just ask people to share a story from a moment in their life when they felt like they really belonged. And it's like, you don't actually have to try so hard to think of behaviors and uh, ways of communicating with people that help to bring them in and bring them into the circle and help mm -hmm. people feel valued. You don't have to work so hard to think about how it feels to be treated in that way and Absolutely. pass it forward just like you have done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so, very cool. Yeah. Well, Greg, I, uh, I've i really enjoyed this conversation. I feel... Um, yeah. I feel I feel so smiley. I'm just thinking about all of the wonderful people in my own life. I feel like I want to call them up and thank them for all their <laughs> contributions. Um, but I'll start by saying thank you. Is there uh, no anything? Problem. Thank you. Is there anything else that you'd like to share before uh, before we say farewell? Any final thoughts or thoughts that have popped into mind as we've talked about these themes? No, I mean, I just really enjoyed the conversation as well. Um, thank you for having me on. It's been great. I'd love to to do this and, and just talk, um, you know, about my experiences. So I really appreciate you bringing me aboard. Absolutely. My pleasure. My absolute pleasure. As we continue digging into what change really means through the stories that come to this show, that come through this show, I really love what 
Greg's stories bring to the conversation. The people. My dad used to say, it doesn't matter what you know, it matters who you know. And while I'd argue, like many of you, that it does matter what you know, uh, he's not wrong. It's good to acknowledge what a difference people make in our lives. From family to friends to foes, the people and relationships in our lives teach us, inspire us, shape us, and give us opportunities we might not otherwise have. I want to hear from you. Have thoughts, feelings, sarcastic remarks, or a story to share based on listening to this episode? Help me keep the conversation going. Join the Facebook group, www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash change hub. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to reach out as a person to you, the people listening. Thank you for listening to the Changed Podcast. Special thanks to my family for their love, support, and patience. To all of the amazing Changed Podcast Patreon page members who I couldn't do this without. The Art of Change Skills for Life and Patreon member producer, Dr. Rick Hirschner. If you got something out of this conversation, please help us spread the word. It really does make a difference. I'm Aiden Nepom, and I wish you the kind of experiences in life you're excited to tell stories about. <laughs>